Coach, thank you for the time. As always, we appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Hey, there's no easy. I've known you a long time, and there's no easy way to do these damn things after uh, a game like that. Now that uh, you've had a little bit of time to go back and and look at tape and all the different problems on both sides of the football, I, I'm just curious what frustrated you the, you the most of of all the negatives in the game, Coach. And there was a lot of motherfucking negatives too. Yeah, you know what? It's never easy, but you know what? It's always our duty and obligation to wake up and go right back to work, right? That's what we do. That's why we're here. Most frustrating thing was not stopping the run, right? It was counter. Um, it was uh, we didn't hold up inside like we thought we could. Uh, we gave up some big plays, and we generated some good offensive momentum on the first drive, and after that, we didn't do very well. So we didn't coach well enough and play well enough. Translations, we got beat down. Um, I rewatched the game, and it just comes down to two things. Football sometimes is so simple. Blocking and tackling. And we couldn't do either one of them, and that's why we got our ass whooped. Coach, uh, offensively, getting back to the the quarterback situation, Tyler Van Dyke, and you kind of mentioned he was back in play during the week. Um, He got any second guessing on on letting Tyler play in that game at all? I thought if he did play, give your team a boost having him back. But was he healthy enough, or did you think it was kind of iffy going into that game? Oh, yes, sir. He was healthy. You know, we wouldn't have put him in there if he wasn't. That's a lie. That's that's a lie. I mean, he didn't look healthy to me. Let me know in the comments, did Tyler Van Dyke look healthy to any of you guys? Maybe I'm wrong. Y'all let me know. But to me, I thought Tyler never should have played. He started off really well. What got him was that one ball that he threw away. He just threw it at an angle that really caused him some pain. And so after that, it um, – it wasn't it wasn't good for him to go back and we kept him out. But again, we wouldn't put him in here unless he was cleared medically and he felt good to go and he wanted to go. Just going forward, the thoughts on on the Van Dyke situation as well as Garcia and Brown. Everybody got got to play. What's your thoughts, if if you can, on on the last three games and and who will play? Uh, it's, you know, it hasn't uh, hasn't been easy. You know, it's been tough trying to figure that part out. And uh, we got to figure that out this week. Obviously, Jakari had his moments. You know, Jake has had his moments. I know it didn't go well for him Saturday, but he's a good player and a good quarterback. And Tyler's on the men. Tyler's always been number one, and he would be number one if he's healthy. We just don't know where he's going to be at. All right. uh, Tyler should be done for the year. I don't think he should play another snap due to his injury and due to our offensive line lack of ability of blocking. I mean, throwing him out there would be, um, you know, it would be – just throwing them to the wolves. Jake, his confidence is shocked. He's shook. That man don't need to, he needs to take time and decompress. Ja'Cory Brown should be the starting quarterback for the next three games. Throw him out there. You're probably going to do a little bit better than you would with Jake because Ja'Cory can run the ball. And behind a bad offensive line, you don't need a quarterback who's injured like Tyler. You don't need a, a quarterback whose confidence is shot right now. So let them sit down. Let Ja'Cory take the snaps. And you also can evaluate Ja'Cory from him getting a full week of preparation and seeing how he can do. People say he can't throw. We don't know that. I think they started to take him out of the game because they didn't have a lot of throwing packages with him. So that's why they threw Jake Garcia in there. Cold turkey. And uh, it, we saw the final product. All right. Well, I was going to ask you the status of Tyler. What about Jalen Rivers also? took a you know, Went down and got hurt pretty good in that game. How is he going forward? Yeah, it's a shame because he's been playing really, really good football. And, um, you know, we need – obviously, we need the offensive line to be healthy. He's um, – He'd be our third starter, fourth starter. We would lose this year uh, if he's not healthy enough to go. So we're, uh, you know, fingers crossed as he gets evaluated again this morning and see where he's at. Just a question for you guys in the comments. Does it seem like we have had a lot of abnormal injuries this season? I know it's football. I know injuries happen, but it seems like it's coming out of the woodwork. Let me know in the comments and shout out to the Patreon squad. Coach, um, just get, I, I, you know, you, you've heard it all and, and we hear it all and people, hey, ask coach about this and ask coach about that. Um, do, do you have enough talent to win or stay competitive in those kind of games or do you feel like 
you should be getting more out of it? Is it the coaching schemes? How do you look at it after a, a game like that, Coach? Well, I think when you lose, you just got to own it, you know, and then you assess you know, as it relates to talent and stuff like that. You got to assess that in the offseason because if you don't, if you start trying to pick at this and that, it sounds like you're picking on people or you're making excuses and you don't go that route, you know. Um, we've been here 10 months. We've been working our tails off with everything we got and a lot of guys have been pouring everything they have into it. And it's uh, some have been decent moments and some haven't been so good. So the bottom line is if – if we're not able to run certain schemes with that we're used to, we got to keep adjusting and finding tweaks and ways to get things done with the guys that are healthy, guys that are available, and the talent that we have. You're right. Shout out to Joe Rose for that question. That was a great question. Uh, you're already playing a lot of young guys are, are are fitting in there and getting some snaps. Do you consider over the last three games giving some of those guys even more snaps, or is it still, hey, we, we got to just play the best players and, and we can't worry about the future right now? Well, you got to play guys that can play and also thinking that, you know, since we have had a, a fair amount of injury, I guess everybody has this time of year, is you want to decrease the load wherever you can for certain guys, right? If guys are playing double duty and having to go on, on two and three of the core special teams units, mm. you still have to find ways to get your, your young guys' experience that have earned it and that show that they have, again, they have a, a good future and that they're putting time into it. And you have to try to take a little bit off of the guys that are, that are taking an extensive amount of reps. Coach, a lot of people are going after Josh Gaddis, the drought of touchdowns now at nine quarters, and oh, he's not he's not adjusting his offense to to what the talent does best, and we should be running the spread more. What do you say to those people and and what have you and Josh talked about with trying to get this team out of this to start getting some scoring touchdown drives? Well, you say the truth, you know, that every effort's being made to do that. I mean, if you look at the biggest thing, Joe, you're a football guy. Watch film. You know, we've been trying everything humanly right. possible from from open sets, empty sets, you know, condensed sets, you know, play action, RPOs, the running game, uh, using the quarterback to run when he can run. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's it's been uh, it's been tough sledding for a couple of weeks. I mean, the guys that I've been really good coaches for a long time didn't suddenly forget how to coach football. Right. Great question by Joe Rose. Joe Rose is bringing them heaters. And um, I agree with Mario, man. I will say this. I'm not defending Gaddis, but I'm, I'm just going to say like this. There's no excuses of not scoring a touchdown in nine quarters. So a couple things that two things can be true. There's no excuse for that. We also are dealing with injuries. We also, they really have tried different things. This offense you know, they're throwing Ja'Cory Brown in there at Wildcat. They got open sets. They got they're, 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 this offense. They really are trying different things. But like I said at the beginning, it comes down to blocking and tackling. And if you can't block anybody, no matter what scheme you got, it, it, you're not going to do well. So, like I said, I'm not taking up for Josh Gaddis because I cannot defend not scoring a touchdown in nine quarters. But I also do agree, it does seem like Gaddis and Mario have tried to do different things. No, it doesn't work that way. You so know, you've got to work with what you got, and you've got to go forward with it, and that's the reality of it. So, You know, it's funny you said that because some, you know, people are asking and everybody's talking late Saturday night and Sunday morning at the at the game in Chicago. And so, listen, he, he's got a hell of a coaching staff. Those guys all got nice track records, been at – Really big programs, and, and Mario knows them all and, and what they can do. So so I get it, and everybody's trying to figure this thing out, especially when you lose to a team like uh, like FSU and, and those things. So how hard is it to get everybody to rebound off this and, and, and get focused in on Georgia Tech, Clemson, and Pitt to, to try to get this thing competitive again, Mario? Well, for me, it's, it's it's never hard for me. I mean, it's I wake up and I live and die by this stuff and live and die by this university. And, you know, the whole purpose has been recruiting people that are like-minded, that are into that. You know, if people are easily broken or, or deterred by adversity, Joe, it just – this ain't for them. And that's – I mean, one of the big things in coming this way, and think about it, I mean, we've been pretty successful at the place that we've been at, at the highest level, you know, and having to build it from – you know, even worse situations is that the whole time you had to bring in the right people and had to keep grooming the right people from within. And you know what that is? That requires some painful steps. And, you know, we're going through them and it is what it is. Got to keep grinding and got to keep making sure that you're working your way and finding ways 
that the right people do the right things at the right time. Mark. Mario basically just said, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all what Mario just said. Listen, I'm a workaholic. I'm a, work, I'm a workaholic. I live, breathe, and eat this shit. And there's players in the locker room who don't live, breathe, and eat this shit. I mean, we saw that Saturday night when niggas was getting ran over. And after they're getting ran over, they're dapping up the guys. We saw it after, uh, 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 you know, you're you're down 31-3. to three and you're, you're talking about first down. We're, we're, we're talking about guys who want to go to IG after losses. Mario is saying, I got to go get those guys who want to win as bad as they want to breathe. And then we will get to where we need to go. That's basically what Mario just said in coach speak. Once I get those guys in, you best believe we're going to rock. Chris Ball, head coach of the University of Miami, joining us here on the Toyota of Hollywood Hotline. Coach, I can only imagine how frustrating it is for you watching the tape. You talked about the run game before, the run defense before, but missed tackles, and that's been something we've talked about for a couple of years here now with this team, but I think it was 17 missed tackles during that game. I know it's easy to ask, how do you fix that, but what do you do going forward to try to get that better? Well, I mean, tackling is technique, right, and toughness and physicality. There, you know, Some guys showed up really, really well, and other guys just did not. You know, uh, I'm very familiar with that running back. That's one of our running backs at Oregon, to put it in perspective, the caliber of teams we're used to building. You know what I mean? So tackling and physicality is a mentality. And some guys, you know, we're gaining a lot of progress to it, and other guys still have a ways to go. You know? And those guys who got a ways to go, about to go to the portal. You know, so, again, keep generating whatever you can from a developmental standpoint and keep recruiting like a maniac. Uh, that's the other part that's interesting. You still feel pretty good about the recruiting class, still staying solid with everything, Mario, with, with the way the team's played and these guys getting a chance to watch it? Absolutely. We've always we've been honest from the beginning. From the beginning, Joe. It is as clear as the day is long. We left very successful programs knowing that we had come here and go to work and that tough work was going to be the deal early on. We all knew it. No one flinched. No one hesitated. That's what comes with it. And that's the reality of it. And there's no shying away from reality. And I think our guys that, uh, that we're recruiting are very, uh, about, very much about building, about being guys that go in and want to work. No fluff, no nonsense, no BS, but building. Um, you guys, you, you feel like guys are playing hard, not always smart, or you, you, you're seeing the efforts you want, or – you, you think there's more to be seen with this group as you evaluate them in your first year? I think a lot of guys are trying to play hard. I think the, the big plays that were made against us were simple mistakes, you know, not forcing, you know, a, a release and, and jamming somebody and, and not, uh, not trusting the eyes and technique on another particular play and, and not blocking long enough or correctly on another play or hat leverage, hat position, um, things that are – that are going to develop and, and get better uh, physicality-wise was, to me, where I was disappointed, quite frankly. And that's the part that, you know, when you run counter, counter is a mentality, and they did a better job running counter than what we did stopping it. So we've got to do a better job coaching it because, like I told the players all the time, you own it all together. You didn't, you didn't coach it well enough. You didn't play well enough, and it comes together. But physicality has to be a state of mind, and we all have to own that. It ain't good enough. Mario, blocking out the noise. I mean, I, I hear a little bit. I can't even imagine what you and the players with the social media stuff that they're on. Um, how hard is it to block out here in year one when you came in? I think everybody thought we are going to have a top-10 team right away. Oh, well, in terms of noise, Joe, I mean, whether things are going great in the season or not, I mean, during the season, it's everything is pretty – it's out for me. You know, with the players, we always preach that. We always try to teach that, but – it's a noisy world. It's athletics, man. You know, there's there's a lot of passion surrounding it. So it's what you sign up for, right? You got to deal with it. You know, in terms of, of myself, yeah, I don't, I mean, besides, you know, something for recruiting or birthdays, I don't really mess much with social media. <laughs> but we, 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 educate, uh, we educate our players on it all the time, knowing that, you know, let's let's call it what it is. If If you really are a competitor and you train at 5 in the morning and you're up late hours, and you're doing all kinds of stuff when everyone's sleeping or not up yet, it, whatever it is, no one else should factor into your headspace than those that are working with you. And if they can understand that concept, they'll understand that 
adversity is something that builds you or breaks you. We want to recruit guys and be around people that it builds up. That's what it's all about. Notice how many he t- notice how much he keeps saying we want to bring in guys. We want to recruit guys. We want to get guys with the mentality. And I'm telling you right now, there's guys in that locker room right now that got a soft mentality. Coach, I know. To the Mario Cristobal standard. When kickoff uh, happens, it doesn't matter anymore. But how about that crowd getting ready while you guys were doing the Canes walk to come in and everything into that stadium? It looked about as electric as I ever seen that stadium. Yeah, that's the part that, you know, really it's uh, – it's, as, a, as a Miami Hurricane, as an alum, that's the part – one of the parts that really just hits you, you know, right in the, right between the eyes that, um, you know, you want to do well for everybody. It's why we're here, you know, been watching it from afar for a long, long time. I know everything that needs to be done and all the things that we have to work on. And unfortunately, you know, it's, it's going to, it takes time, you know, and you want to do well for everybody, for the community, for the fans, for the university. We're not there yet. Are we going to get there? Absolutely. 100% undoubtedly. And we're going to do that at full force with unbelievable players and an unbelievable program. Right now, you know what? It's tough sledding. we got to eat it, and we got to own up and be tough. If you ain't tough, then you know what? Well, tough crap. It ain't for you. Mario, um, appreciate you coming on uh, to talk a little bit. These are these are never easy for uh, for anybody, but I uh, I appreciate you getting up with us this morning. And, and, and for your fan base to hear, you know, for the, all these questions and everything, and what's Mario thinking, and uh, and so we appreciate you coming what, what on. Am I thinking Mario is pissed off? That's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> I'm upset. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be around some good teams for a long time, and played on some good teams, and built some good teams, and now we got to build this one. And early on, it's tough ass sledding, and, and I hate every bit of a loss that comes with it. But I also get up more enthused than ever to go to work, and that's where we're at. And it's that simple, and it's that truthful, brother. There ain't no other fluff to it. Mario, thanks, man. Always appreciate the time, appreciate Coach. It, That's my guy right there. That's my guy right there. Y'all heard what he said. This shit ain't easy. This shit ain't easy. We want it to be easy, but it ain't easy. It's been 20 years of trying to qu- quick fix shit. It's been 20 years of, of, of trying to put Band-Aids on shit. It's been 20 years of trying a quick, fast diet, trying to intermittent fast, trying to, to uh, uh, oh, no eating carbs, trying to do the keto. No, it's time to build the discipline in the mindset to get this team where you want to be, to get you where you want to be. Mario is, I only thing I disagree with Mario about is Tyler Van Dyke. He should have never played against Florida State. The man could barely even last uh, a quarter. Everything else, I agree with them. It's it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. But we got to go back to work, and we got to get those guys in that Mario believes in. Mario said this will get fixed, and I believe him. Why do I believe him? Hold on a minute. Somebody messaged me on uh, Facebook. Hold on one second. Anyway, um, because he's done it at FIU. Took FIU to a bowl game that they had never been a part of. Uh, Tied for their conference championship that they had never been a part of. Got FIU their first ever four-star recruit. A lot of people don't know that. Went to Oregon. Willie Taggart dipped on them. Built them back up. Sent guys to the NFL. He's done it. That's why I believe he can do it. He's done it. That's why I believe he can do it. He has done it. That's why I believe he can do it. And I'm not going to say there's nobody this or that, or but if there's anybody who wants to win at the U, it's Mario Cristobal. Now, Mario, that talking is working now. But um, show us something, man. Give me, you got to give me something. I'm going to keep riding for you on the microphone, but you got to give me something. This first year, we didn't expect this to look this ugly. 
I'll be back with more content. Peace.